Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. It's the end of the week where we cover the biggest news stories surrounding brands and VCs entering Web3. As usual, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my opinion. And if you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? So it was a big week for shoe brands this week as three of them either made announcements or started their events. First up, we have the artist Ferocious partnering with Adidas Originals to launch the Trefoil Flower Mint Pass, which has a collection size of 4,500. And the mint is gonna be happening on June 22nd. It's gonna be split up into different phases. And depending on the phase you get, it's gonna be priced from 0.2 ETH to 0.25 Ethereum. As for utility, holders will be able to redeem a physical pair of Adidas original sneakers and will get a digital version to be worn in the metaverse. And if you're curious on allow list, essentially you need to own some of these NFTs, either the Adidas NFTs or the paint drops by Ferocious to be in the first two phases, followed by the third phase, which is reserved for Admit One, Bored Apes, Doodles, Inhabitants, and Rose. Radio. Of course, there will be a public sale after that. And if we scroll a little bit further, you can see that redemption is going to be happening in August and shipping is going to happen in September. Next up, we saw Puma launch their Black Station digital experience where anybody could enter through their website and explore the digital world. And I personally tried out the experience on desktop as they recommended. It was a little bit laggy for me at times. I would have to reload it a couple of times. I also found the controls were a bit off as you had to click down your mouse button and drag the screen in order to look around. So I did not find that part intuitive at all. It wasn't the best user experience in my opinion. However, while anybody could explore the world, if you own one of their RB tokens, which was airdropped on June 5th, you are eligible to purchase a physical rule breaker sneaker as well as claim two digital wearables. Now the third shoe brand of the week to have an event is of course Nike.swoosh as they finally revealed those boxes that you were able to purchase a few weeks ago and inside the boxes is a random digital Air Force One. Now don't be alarmed if your shoes are not revealed yet. They did say not everybody is going to be able to reveal at the same time and there still is no secondary marketplace so you aren't able to purchase one or to sell yours if you do own one but I'm a very big fan of Nike. I own like 13 pairs of physical shoes so bring on the digital shoes. Next up we have artist Snoop Dogg launching his Passport series which is an evolving digital collectibles that allows fans to virtually follow his high school reunion tour and is going to have perks like behind the scenes footage, merchandise, ticket sales, exclusive experiences, and what he's calling the Snoop Selects digital art airdrops featuring various artists such as Terrell Jones. The sale is happening in partnership with Transient Labs and is going for a mint price of 0.025 Ethereum. Next up, we saw Chimpers launch their very own iOS app, which lets you use Chimpers stickers in your iPhone. Now, I personally find this a great way to break out of Web3. And if you haven't been tracking them, Chimpers has done an amazing job at growing their Instagram. They have these really cute videos or posts that they make. They're up to a quarter million followers. And I really like this strategy. It's similar to what Pudgy Penguins has done and their Instagram has over 600,000 followers. And I would really love to see more projects do this, especially something like Azuki with their beans and Kaiju Kings with the type of art that they could put out there and their target audience. I think they would do really well. Next up, in the wonderful world of art, everybody's timeline on Twitter was pretty much flooded with The Goose, which is an art piece by Dmitry Cherniak as part of his Ringers collection. Now, this piece was sold by Sotheby's through their auction for a whopping $5.4 million. However, it does seem like the total price was $6.2 million or 4100 Ethereum after the fees, which is quite a hefty fee of $800,000. Now, if we check the last sale for this piece, which happened two years ago, it only went for 1800 Ethereum. However, it was more expensive than the piece sold for this week at $5.8 million, which goes to show you how down bad we are in terms of Ethereum. But this piece was bought by Punk6529, the founder of the memes. So hopefully, similar to a few weeks ago when we saw the Fidenza sale, it helped spark a mini art bull run, which was very short-lived, but hopefully this one sparks an even longer one. We already saw multiple sales on the Autoglyphs collection, which is is very illiquid, so hopefully we see a lot more. And of course, the other thing we're gonna see is a bunch of degen mints that pop out of nowhere. These guys are super quick with it. For example, there was Gen Goose. I own none of these. I don't plan on buying any of these, but it minted out super quick in one minute, probably just because it had the word goose in the name. 
Next up, we have Polygon partnering with Flipkart, which is essentially the Amazon of India, as well as Hang, which is a loyalty program platform to offer Flipkart's millions of users a gamified Web3 loyalty program. Now, it seems as though Flipkart is going to be rewarding their buyers via NFTs, which I assume are going to give you utilities like discounts on certain brands, or maybe even exclusive access to special products or even early access to products. And of course, you're going to be able to buy and sell these NFTs on the secondary marketplace. Now, I personally believe this is the future for loyalty programs. I believe every company is gonna be adopting this and I'm very excited. I cannot wait. Imagine somebody is a loyal customer to Nike or Apple. They spend a ton of money and they have rewards in the form of NFTs for 25% off and they decide to list them for like a hundred bucks, but then you wanna go buy an item that's for $2,000. You could buy it for a hundred bucks and then apply it to the $2,000 item and you'd be saving $400. So I'm very excited for the future of loyalty programs and also congratulations to Polygon because it is yet another brand that chooses Polygon to be onboarded into Web3. In economic news, this week we had both the CPI data and the FOMC meeting. Now the TLDR of it is that the CPI data came in lower than forecasted by 0.1%, which is super bullish for the markets. And during the FOMC meeting, we had the much expected rate freeze. Now, Jerome Powell also said we should not expect any rate cuts until the end of the year at minimum, that we'll probably even see two more rate hikes of 25 basis points, and that their target is still 2% inflation. Now, I know a lot of people are freaking out because crypto is going down, NFTs are going down, altcoins are getting absolutely destroyed, and we're definitely not out of the woods yet. However, we did get a glimpse at what some of the big boys are doing, as BlackRock is essentially close to filing for their Bitcoin ETF, and ironically, they're going to be doing this by going through Coinbase, which of course is being sued by the SEC. Now, to me, this is all a little bit sus. You have the UK, China, Russia, United Arab Emirates, all embracing crypto and inviting companies to come build there. And meanwhile, we have America and the SEC just attacking every company, going after Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, and a ton of tokens. And while all this is happening, you have BlackRock gearing up to offer Bitcoin to its investors. Now, if you don't know who BlackRock is, or you don't think this is important, I encourage you to look up pretty much any company, at least in the S&P 500, and look at the top three holders, and you're going to see the words BlackRock. They pretty much have their hands in every single company, Amazon, Meta, NVIDIA, any company you could think of, BlackRock is up there with a major share in all of these companies, and they manage upwards of $9 trillion. So we already knew that Larry Fink was very bullish on Web3. However, now we're finally seeing it come into fruition. Moving into gaming news, Momoguro releases the first version of their RPG game, Legends of Uno, in collaboration with Immutable. Now, the game allows holders to complete daily quests and collect loot. I did check out the website, however, I am not a holder, so I don't get the full experience. But if you have a Momoguro, definitely worth checking this out. Finally, in fundraises, and there's a ton of fundraises that happen, I pretty much just pick the ones that I find the most interesting or relevant. So first off, we have collectibles raising $5 million for a platform, which is a Web3 community and marketplace for physical collectibles. And if you're into this kind of stuff, you can currently reserve your name, or you could even just go and snipe somebody else's name, like a ton of people always do to me when there's a new ENS or dot Bitcoin or dot soul or whatever it is, they always buy it and then they try to sell it to me for $20,000. I will never buy it. So you're just wasting your 10 bucks in gas fees. But I went to reserve mine in case I one day want to use this platform. Next up, we have Jack Dorsey donating $5 million to Brink, which I assume it's a nonprofit. They only get money through donations. So I'm just going to say nonprofit. And their goal is to strengthen the Bitcoin protocol and network through research and development, as well as to support the Bitcoin developer community through funding, education, and mentoring. Next, we have Research Hub, which is a company by the CEO of Coinbase, raising $5 million to continue the development of their platform that allows anybody to earn rewards via their research coin by contributing and publishing scientific research and content to its platform. Finally, the biggest raise of the week was Genson AI with a whopping $43 million in a round led by A16Z. Genson is essentially a trustless protocol that rewards participants who offer their computational power to perform machine learning tasks. So there's no middleman, no oversight. It's 
all done through smart contracts, essentially how most companies are gonna be operating in the future. That's it for this week's recap. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla.